Sometimes you download a picture from your camera, you take a look at it and you think, right, shall I hit the delete button or not? This is one of those pictures. Now, I took it at uh, a recent sailing event down at Cardiff Bay. There was barely a breath of wind and the sky was just completely flat grey. Then I had an idea. The idea is to replace the sky. We're going to be doing that in this first part of the video. In the second part of the video, we're going to take a look at uh, applying new filters in Photoshop Elements 11 and Elements 12. Right, the sky I've selected is this one here. Now, to get the sky from here over to our swing ride, I've got the hand tool selected. So whatever tool you got from the toolbar, if you press V, it now changes it to the move tool. Clicking down, lifting it up, you'll notice the way we get that, that little black arrowhead. You'll also notice a grey rectangle. Lift it up until you come to the tab. When you reach the tab, you're now on the swing right. OK, press and hold down shift on the keyboard. Holding down shift, good. You can re now release your mouse or pen. Because you held down shift, it placed it directly over the top of the image. Now one quick way of revealing the image underneath is if we come over to the Layers panel, we're going to go up to the Blend Modes, we're going to change this to Multiply. Look what happens. We can now see the main part of our picture underneath. You can also come to the Opacity slider and as we reduce this down it starts to look pretty good round about that area. That'll do nicely. but. You can see there's a fair bit of, uh, yeah, doesn't look really good around this area. The colour's now a little bit muted as we just switch this on and off. You can see what that's doing to the picture. So for the next stage, we're going to put in a, a layer mask. Now, with a layer mask and masking, we're going to use a brush. Now, the brush I've got selected, if I just come down to the tool options, there it is. You can see it's a soft edge brush. It's a 600 pixel, which is pretty big. Let's reduce that down in size to, I don't know, let's go for about around about the 200 mark. That should be pretty good. The opacity is set to 100%. Right, let's close this down. Now with black, when you've got black as a foreground colour and you've got white on the mask there, what this is going to do, it's going to blast its way through that mask, revealing what's underneath. And you can see the colour coming through there nicely. That looks pretty good. Now the other important thing with masking is if you go over and you come into the sky like this and you think, oops, I've made a mistake or whatever word you want to use. If you put white as the foreground colour, what this is now going to do, it's going to restore that mask. Just keep an eye up there. You can see that way that little tail there just disappeared. So you can actually paint it back in. Pretty good. Right, pressing X on the keyboard. We're now going to go and we're going to remove this area here. So I'm going to very quickly go over this. Just zoom in as well using Command Spacebar. Stay Command Spacebar, Control Spacebar. Don't you love it when that happens? Round this area here. So zoom right in. Take a look around your picture, and just come in round the edges like this. And so, yeah, this is going to take just a little bit of time. The more effort you put into it, the better the results will be. But I'm just going to quickly go around this part now. When you're looking around, just press the space bar down. You can move your way around the image and we come around this part here. I'm going to come over this guy and if we zoom in even closer, so zoom in right in, we're in, let's go into 100%. There we are. Reducing the size of the brush down, I'm now going to use the left hand square bracket so we can reduce the size of the brush down and look at the color coming through with this. So we've now got those reds, that looks pretty good. And uh, the shot itself, you can see it is a bit blurry, which is just what I was after. I did show the, slow the shutter speed down, get my words right in a minute. And bring in through these rather funky colour trainers. And uh, see, I've just gone over the edge there. Right, pressing X on the keyboard. We've now got white as our foreground colour. And I can just paint that back in. Right, pressing X on the keyboard again. We now have black as our foreground colour around this area of the arm and you can go around the whole picture like this. Now, rather than bore you and uh, take up so much time, because it can be a little bit uh, fiddly, let's just zoom down to this area here. What I'm going to do is continue doing it and uh, we'll pick the video up just a little bit later and I'll show you then exactly the areas I've been over.
There we are, that's the story so far, but can we be sure that we've got the mask completely covered? Let's take a look at the mask. Now if you press down the Alt or the Option key, so press and hold down Alt or Option, now click on the layer mask, what is black you are looking through, you are seeing the image underneath, what is white is going to be a little bit of a gap. So what we need to do is fill this in. Just going to make the brush a little bit bigger. We're working live on the mask itself and we can just come over these areas. We can fill these in just ensuring that the mask has been really completely applied. Looks pretty good like that. A little bit difficult when we come to some of these areas. Okay, we can zoom right in on this area. If I just click and zoom in here, you can see the way we can come over this part of the image, reducing the size of the brush down using the left hand square bracket and through we come. But a little bit more difficult when we come over other parts of the image. Looks like I missed off a bit of a lake there. Using Command 0, Control 0, let's go to Fit on Screen. We're going to click on the eyeball icon. That is going to uh, remove the mask, putting it back into place. There is another way that we can actually check out how the mask is working. To your keyboard, if you press the backward slash key, so pressing the backward slash key, look what happens. Just make sure as well that you are on the mask when you do this. So the backward slash key reveals this pink quick mask. We're going to zoom in. I'm going to use command spacebar, control spacebar, stay over this area here. Well, I would if I could uh, zoom into it. And now with this, you'll notice the way I can paint in pink. I've actually changed the brush as well. The may not have seen that but I've actually changed the brush if I just come and show you I am now using a hard edge brush which is better when it comes to tidying up the mask than a soft edge so around that area just filling in these parts that are thin and you can see the way it then blends in round there now over this part that looks pretty good what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go over the uh, the rest of the image so I'm going to speed it up again a bit like the actual swing ride itself and uh, I shall pick it up. Oh by the way yeah I'm glad I deliberately made that mistake. If you do go over the edge press X on the keyboard that is going to put white as the foreground color. You can then come in and you can actually remove it. Looks pretty good like that. Let's just tidy it up. You can be as thorough as you like. Don't forget to press X again to put black as the foreground color over his rather snazzy yellow trainers and there it is, job done. Right, I'm going to speed you up and I'll get back to you when I've finished uh, tidying up the mask. Okay, job done. I'm going to use the backward slash key again, backward slash key again. Don't forget, it turns off that quick mask so we can now see the image underneath. Talking of the image underneath, if I just switch this on and off, that's what we started off with. That's put in the sky. And if we come over to the mask itself, if I press and hold down shift, so press and hold down shift, now click on the mask, and that's going to switch the mask on and off. So you can see there it is replacing the sky with the multiplied blend mode 75%. And uh, yeah. Really happy with the way it's worked out on the mask. Must be honest, did do a very quick job. I know you will do better. I can just see some areas around here, for example. So if I just zoom into this part, just to finish it off. I've got white as a foreground. I am working on the mask layer itself. And if I just quickly come over that, just to finish it off, there it is. That's not so bad now. And uh, right, Command-0, Control-0 to go out to fit on screen. OK, I did it quickly. Didn't want to keep you all waiting. For the next stage, the sky. Looking at it, I think what I'd like to do is just come over to the opacity slider. I'm just going to drop it down very slightly. I'm going to blend it in with the uh, sky image underneath, perhaps not quite as far as that. Just taking it up into that area. There looks pretty good. What we got? 66, 67 like it that looks better like that right color the adjustment layer hue saturation when the hue saturation adjustment layer opens we've got channel at the top we have got master you have got a drop down menu i'm going to select red notice the changes the way it sort of brings up this slider the way we've got these little color picker tools i'm going to select this color picker bringing it out we're going to target this area here as i click down you may notice the way these jump around. These are jumping around because we're now targeting the red. There's the saturation. I can take it out, 
we can increase it and you'll notice the way that it's changing in other parts of the red that we've got in this image. I'm going to take it up to that area, I'm going to bring it up quite high because I like what it's doing to the uh, red seats as well as well as his jacket, that's really jumping out nicely. Still got the colour picker tool, we're going to come over, I'm going to target, got to be his uh, trainers isn't it, <laughs> the yellow on his trainers and if I click down notice the way all those yellows brighten up. Also notice that the amount we put in for the reds, that 45, has now been taken in with the yellow as well. I'm going to slightly reduce it down into that area. That looks pretty good like that. OK, how about the, the blues? Still got the colour picker tool. We're going to bring it out. I'm going to target this area bright blue in the seat there. That looks good. Not so sure I like what it's doing to the sky, so I'm just going to drop it down into plus 24. OK, happy with that, so we're going to close this down. Something else I'd like to check out, because it looks a little bit flat, and what I mean by that is the uh, the tonal range of the picture, and again, an adjustment layer, and levels. Always use levels as an adjustment layer, because you can come back into it, you can make any changes. Now, if we look at the histogram here, you can see the way it got tails off. This is in the highlight area. You can see we've got the whites here, so this is the whites into the highlight areas. You've then got the mid-tone greys coming into the shadow areas before coming into the blacks. So if I click on this slider as we start to move it across, you'll notice it brightening up the picture. Great stuff. Just moving it back and forth again. Blacks, yeah, happy with this. Now coming to the center slider, the gamma slider, move it this way, you darken things down, move it this way, we brighten things up. I'm just going to take it into that area. Great stuff. Click on the eye, you can see the before and the after. We're going to close that down and we're now going to save this in layers before going on to the next exciting part, I hope. By going to File, we're going to go to Save As and yeah, Swing Ride PSD in my working folder would be pretty good. It is a Photoshop file. Click Save to this. Okay, I've done it before. That is now going to replace it. Saving it in layers will allow you to come in. You can make any changes to any of these layers in here before you come through to the next part of applying the effect to it. Hope you'll join me in the next video. Until then, happy imaging and take care.